Well, good Sunday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I am outdoor in my outdoor studio. It's the first time I've really been out here much. I've been getting everything cleaned up and ready to go. I don't know why I waited till it was 90 plus degrees out here to get out here, but we're going to start being out here because we need to get some fresh air uh, out here and start really getting ready for the season this week is a big week because we step it up in practice with the veterans and the rookies and OTAs where the intensity starts to build up quite a bit more than what we've had so far this is the beginning of the melding of the team now what's interesting is is you know everybody's got their philosophies on what the Cowboys need to do to fix themselves a lot of people will say that Zeke Elliott he's washed up he needs to be benched as one ESPN person said, bench Zeke Elliott. You know, it's kind of like fantasy football, and no disrespect, uh, my man, Stuart, I, I know you're the big fantasy football guy, but the thing is with fantasy football is a lot of times it shades your perception on what is reality. You know, people will say, trade this guy, you know, where you can just plug and play. Well, when you do that, you're not dealing with the realities of football of, does this person fit the system that I'm going in? Does this person, can you do it financially? Will they be able to be immediately the guy they were on the other team? It doesn't work that way in the real world. But let's say you do go ahead and bench Zeke Elliott for the reasons that they say, because Zeke Elliott, he's been going downhill. You know, he barely got to a thousand yards. Now I'm hoping that uh, I've, I've been, it's been a while since I've used the outdoor studio here. So bear with me. I may not have everything down like I used to. Um, and we're getting here with the uh, screen. What I really would love to have out here. And, and maybe one of these days, my dream will come true is, actually have a giant touch screen up here as opposed to the regular one where I've got to use the cursor. But let's take a look here. When we say that Zeke Elliott sucked and that he barely got to a thousand yards, I want you guys to take a look at the numbers here as I get my cursor back on here. Jonathan Taylor led the league 1,811 yards. Nick Chubb, 1,259. Joe Mixon, 1,205. Najee Harris, 1,200. Dalvin Cook, 11.59. Antonio Gibson, 10.37. So let me ask you this. Would you bench Zeke Elliott for Joe Mixon? Would you, would you take Joe Mixon over Zeke Elliott? That's my question right there. Would you take Najee Harris over Zeke Elliott? Would you take Antonio Gibson over Zeke Elliott? And let me ask this question. Should any of these guys be benched? I know you're saying, what the hell are you talking about, Mark? What are you talking about? Would you bench Joe Mixon? Are you crazy or just plain stupid? Dude had 1,200 yards last year. How you, are you crazy? Antonio Gibson? Dude, come on. Be for real. You are just plain stupid. Well, see, understand there's perception and then there's reality, okay? Because here's the thing. When you look at Nick Chubb, excuse me, not Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon's 1,205 yards, he averaged 4.1 yards a carry, okay? And when you look at Najee Harris, he averaged 3.9 yards a carry, okay? When you look at Antonio Gibson, he averaged four yards a carry. I know, Mark. What's your point? Well, here's the thing. Let's dig a little deeper. If we go yards per carry, Zeke Elliott was 4.2 yards. Down from where he had been in the past. I'll give you that. But he still averaged 4.2 yards a carry, which is more by 0.7 yards a carry than Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram was 3.5. Alvin Kamara. I bet you'd say I'll take Alvin Kamara over Zeke Elliott. Well, Alvin Kamara was a half a yard less than Zeke Elliott. Let me say that again. 
a half a yard. Najee Harris was 3.9. That's about a foot less per carry than Zeke Elliott, a guy that we say is washed up. Antonio Gibson was about 10 inches short every time he ran the football. <clears throat> and Joe Mixon, <coughs> excuse me, was about six inches shorter. See, what you have to understand is all those guys had a lot more carries last year. And I want to bring up something else here, too. For those that say that Zeke Elliott is washed, I will say that the Cowboys season was the season of two seasons. There was the first eight games where the offense was on fire. But we had a multitude of things that happened the second half, between mainly injuries. We had Dak Prescott, who injured his calf, missed a game. After the New England game, we had the PCL injury for Zeke Elliott. We had Tony Pollard with the plantar fasciitis. We had Amari Cooper with COVID. We had um, the concussion on C.D. Lamb. We had Tyron Smith in and out of the lineup. We juggled the offensive line on a weekly basis. But here's what's interesting because... If we go through here, and let me see if I can size it up a little bit more for you guys. If we look at the game logs here, as the season started, Zeke Elliott, three yards of carry against Tampa Bay, start the season. Against the Chargers, 4.4. Against the Eagles, which have a good defense, 5.6. Against Carolina, 7.2 against the New York Giants, 5.2 against New England, 4.1, and then you had Minnesota at 3.1 and Denver at 5.1. If you actually go through those first eight games and average it up, Zeke Elliott averaged 4.7 yards a carry, he totaled 4.2 on the season. It was 3.7 going down the stretch with a tour PCL. So let's do this. Let's look at this. 4.7. If Zeke Elliott had kept up with that 4.7, that would have been the 10th highest in the NFL as far as yards per carry. He would have been up there with James Robinson, 4.7. Aaron Jones, 4.7. Dalvin Cook, 4.7. Elijah Mitchell, 4.7. That's where he would have been for the season. So, I, I believe me, I agree that Zeke Elliott does not have the burst that he had three or four years ago. I'm not saying that he is. No fool would end up saying that is the case. But I don't necessarily need him to be that guy. If I get the 4.7 yards per carry that Zeke was the first half of the season, we're golden. We are literally golden. That'll put him on pace for over 1,200 yards on the season. And that's about where I need him to be. Because as you look at this, you know, you start looking at the numbers. That is tops in the NFL. And back to yardage when they say he barely got to a thousand yards understand there's only seven backs that went to a thousand yards seven in the nfl now back to should tony pollard start over zeke elliott well here's the thing that's interesting they are two completely different running backs doing two completely different jobs if it's fourth down and a half a yard, who would you rather have the football? Zeke Elliott or Tony Pollard? I'm taking Zeke all day. If you've got a bit blitzing linebacker, a blitzing linebacker, who do you want to be there to protect Dak Prescott? I want Zeke Elliott all day. All day. And I think back to... And I'm going to say the Washington Redskins. I'm not going to say uh, 
commanders or football team because we're actually talking about the Washington Redskins. Because the Washington Redskins, back in the day, back in the 80s when they were winning Super Bowls, they had a slow bruising back in John Riggins. Between the tackles, he pounded the hell out of the football. But then they also had another running back in Joe Washington who was smaller, kind of a scat back, and a third down back. See, you get used to getting pounded on in the middle, the, you know, that, that little space, that little real estate there, that tackle box. Then you start hitting them with the speed back. Those guys who've been pounded back and forth in that tackle box now all of a sudden have to run and sprint after a guy with speed. It's that mystery, it's that change of pace, it's that not knowing what they're going to do that makes the difference. So understand that the two of backs do two different jobs and you don't wanna rely on just one back. Longevity wise, the best thing that could happen to Zeke is that you also use Tony Pollard. And for our Cowboys offense, you can be more dynamic. So this whole thing of benching Zeke Elliott, oh, we just don't need him. Guys, if it weren't for the contract, and the contract, of course, is a different argument altogether. Take the contract out of there. We're, we're, there's nothing you can do to change that contract. He is what he is. And I believe that come next year, he'll go the Demarcus Lawrence route where they, you know, he realizes, you know, I want to be a cowboy for life and takes that discount and they redo his contract. I can believe that that's what will happen. But I look at it and say, if Zeke Elliott comes back like he was the beginning of last year, that we are golden. And make no mistake about it, what happened to the Cowboys offense the second half of the year was kind of the perfect storm of everything coming together to hurt the offense. It was Zeke Elliott having the tore PCL. It was the plantar fasciitis. It was the Tyron Smith not in the lineup. It was the offensive line shifting around. It was Dak Prescott and the hurt calf. All of these things you have to look at and say, yeah, there's reasons why it didn't work. Doesn't mean that it won't work in the future. We just got to get Zeke healthy. We got to get the offensive line in better shape. We got to have less holding penalties. We have to have our quarterback not coming off of injury and healthy. We have to have our other back there together. And if you have those things, I'm going to tell you, this whole doom and gloom of the Dallas Cowboys offense, I'm not there with them saying that they're going to drop, you know, precipitously. I think the Cowboys offense is still going to be very, very dynamic. And hopefully this video comes out looking pretty good and uh hope you guys tune in to our live stream in about oh three hours and 45 minutes and i think we'll be doing it from out here as i finish getting all this stuff set up and as always i appreciate you guys being here and we're going to keep breaking uh these bullshit fallacies that we keep being told and I'm not ready. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Well, we'll hit you up with this one. We always love to laugh at Philly 500. What an idiot! Yeah, probably nobody's better on the bench. Uh, what an idiot! I'll, I'll do it. You can chop my leg off. I'd be no leg in 500. <laughs> like you back. And I would rather have you didn't say no leg in 500. <laughs> Because every time we're in a situation where we can't afford to give up points or it's a crucial third down, he screws up. Every time. Oh, he dropped it. All right, good people. I'll see you soon.